Hello viewers, today we will discuss The Home and the World by Rabindranath Tagore. Objectives of this lesson To consider how Tagore makes use of symbolism To analyze various aspects of the novel for critical appreciation Summary The novel is set in early 20th century India in the estate of the Bengali Zamindar Nikhil. He marries Bimala, a woman who is both of a darker complexion and a lower status in society. This is contradictory to Nikhil's family traditions. Their love is idyllic and both are dedicated to one another until the appearance of his friend and the radical revolutionist Sandeep. Sandeep, a passionate and active man, is a contradiction to the peace-loving and somewhat passive Nikhil. His charismatic speech, support of the Swadeshi movement and a renewed appreciation of everything Indian while denying everything British garnered support from local natives across the province. After hearing Sandeep speak at a rally, Bimla insists that Sandeep visit Nikhil's estate. While visiting, Sandeep's influential nature easily attracts the innocent and unsuspecting Bimala, and she suggests that he make his headquarters in their home. Once empowered by the inside world only, knowing only her husband and home, she becomes engaged with the outside world, taking part in the Swadeshi movement by working with Sandeep. As the novel develops, Bimala is drawn to Sandeep's passion and the attraction between the two becomes inevitable, producing a love triangle. She begins to question her marriage with Nikhil and finds in Sandeep what she had always sought after in a man, which is zeal, ambition and a hint of danger. Bimala begins to help Sandeep by stealing money from Nikhil's treasury, convinced that if it is not equally his money as well as hers, then it belongs to the country as well. While Bimala claims her national duty as motivation, her true intentions lie in pleasing Sandeep. Nikhil subsequently discovers their actions but grants Bimala the freedom to grow and choose what she wants in life. As their marriage was arranged at a very young age for Bimala, Nikhil thinks this is an opportunity for Bimala to grow. Meanwhile, Bimala experiences love for the first time, while this ultimately helps her understand that it is indeed her husband who really loves her. The novel ends with a riot resulting in Sandeep's fleeing the city, Nikhil is mortally wounded in the head and Amulya, a young follower of Sandeep, who considered Bimbala as a sister and whom Bimbala thinks of as a son since she has no children, dies by a bullet through his head. Tagore wrote eight novels and four novellas. Gare Bare, which means at home and outside, is the original novel written in Bengali, which was translated into English as The Home and the World in 1916. It was also released as a film by Satyajit Ray by the name of Ghare Bare. The novel narrated through the lens of the idealistic Zamindar protagonist Nikhil exordiates rising Indian nationalism, terrorism and religious zeal in the Swadeshi movement. The novel is a frank expression of Tagore's conflicted sentiments it emerged out of a 1914 bout of depression that he suffered. The novel bleakly ends with Hindu-Muslim sectarian violence and Nikhil's death. In the novel, matters of self-identity, personal freedom 
and religion are developed in the context of a family story and a love triangle. The home and the world illustrates the battle between the sympathy for Western values and ideas and the revolution against Western culture. It is said that Tagore had this battle of ideas within himself. These two ideas are portrayed in two of the main characters, Nikhil and Sandeep. Nikhil is rational and opposes violence and Sandeep lets nothing stand in his way from reaching his goals. These two opposing ideals are very important in understanding the history of the region of Bengal and its contemporary problems. There is much controversy over whether Tagore was attempting to represent Gandhi. In Sandeep, many argue that Tagore would not even venture to personify Sandeep as Gandhi because Tagore was a great admirer of Gandhi and Gandhi always stood against violence while Sandeep, the character in the novel, doesn't hesitate to use violence to get what he wants. The novel has a certain allegorical quality because Nikhil and Sandeep seem to represent two opposing visions for the nation, with Bimala torn between the two, not knowing for sure what should be her guiding principle, and she begins to signify Bengal tottering between the two possibilities available for the nation. Nikhil's vision arising out of an enlightened humanitarian perspective and a global perspective places emphasis on true equality and harmony of individuals and nations. On the other hand, Sandeep's radical, parochial and belligerent nationalism aims to cultivate an intense sense of patriotism in individuals and threatens to replace their moral sensibility with national bigotry and blind fanaticism. If Nikhil and Sandeep stand for two possibilities for the nation, Bimila turning the corner and returning to her senses after a prolonged infatuation with Sandeep and his views signals Tagore's pessimism about the future of Bengal. Set against the backdrop of the Swadeshi Home Rule Movement in Bengal, following its sudden and arbitrary partition by the then British Viceroy in India, Lord Curzon, in 1905, The Home and the World was originally published in Bengali as Ghare Bare in 1915. Later, it was translated and published in English by the author's nephew, Surendranath Tagore with active cooperation from the author himself. This was done in 1919. The events in the novel deal with the period between 1905 and 1907, a period of tremendous political unrest in Bengal. The public upheaval that takes place alongside another revolution, that of women's emancipation, and a new gender equation is represented in the novel very well. The Home and the World is the first fictional exploration of the tangled web of crucial issues related to the two spheres, the home and the world in early 20th century Bengal. The background against which Tagore set the novel The Home and the World is that of the Swadeshi movement. Tagore depicts the different perspectives in the movement through the story of a love triangle composed of an educated, moderate nobleman Nikhil, his willful, impressionable wife Bimula, and a passionate but self-serving freedom fighter Sandeep. The novel is set during the height of the Swadeshi movement, a boycott of British goods that was initiated in 1905 
as a protest against Great Britain's arbitrary division of Bengal into two parts. At first, Tagore was one of the leaders of the Swadeshi movement. But when protests evolved into violent conflicts between Muslims and Hindus, Tagore left the movement. In The Home and the World, he explained why he did not approve of what the Swadeshi movement had become. As an active participant in the Swadeshi movement, Tagore played an important role in the struggle for independence from British rule in the years up to 1907. He, however, grew disillusioned with the elitism and increasing violence of the movement and so gradually retreated from the political sphere into the inner domain of poetry, art and spirituality. This profound disillusionment with the violence of the nationalist movement and the retreat into an inner realm of spirituality is poignantly expressed in the novel. The novel centers on the terrorist violence of 1907 and the ultimate failure of the violent revolt as a means to independence. At the same time, it also expresses Tagore's own ambivalent status torn between home and the world, between the inner realm of art and the outer realm of spirituality and public action. Tagore's concern about the political and socio-economic problems of India came out in the open during the Swadeshi movement that broke out in the wake of Bengal's partition in 1905. This predominantly Hindu movement was led by the wealthy, orthodox and reactionary Bengali middle class who had little or no connection with the lower strata of society which included a large number of Muslims. The core agenda was to boycott British goods and encourage the countrymen to buy homemade, that is, Swadeshi substitutes, which would make the British suffer economically. Being actively involved in the movement, Tagore took part in mass rallies, delivered speeches, and composed many of his famous songs Tagore's enthusiasm soon started to fade when the movement, which was conceived to be a non-violent one, turned violent and repulsive. An infuriated Tagore, condemning the violence perpetrated by extremist groups, wrote, To light the fire and then complain that it burns is absolutely childish. Deeply frustrated by the perpetual contest of lies, deception, cruelties and hypocrisies of the egoistic and vindictive national leaders, Tagore completely withdrew himself from the movement. Though his withdrawal attracted severe criticism from many of his compatriots, some of whom even ridiculously labelled him as a British collaborator, he was never to be seen associated with any nationalist movement again. Tagore's critical observation of the Swadeshi movement, its darker complexities, its crushed aspirations and also the heartbreaking tragedies are superbly articulated in the pages of this novel, The Home and the World. Tagore here is highlighting the paradox of the Swadeshi at a time when many countries were struggling to attain a freedom from colonial rule. Through the novel, Tagore, as Rahul Sapra has pointed out, raised his voice for a global order but one based on spiritual and not political unity. Tagore here is highlighting the paradox of the Swadeshi. The movement which began in order to resist Curzon's decision to divide Bengal but actually ends up making the work of the British easier by creating fault lines between Hindus and Muslims. The word Swadeshi derives from Sanskrit 
and is a conjunction of two Sanskrit words swa which means self or own and desh which means country. So, swadesh would be own country and swadeshi the adjectival form of the word would mean of one's own country. The opposite of swadeshi in Sanskrit is videshi or not of one's own country. The Swadeshi movement in India 1905 to 1912 was started as a response to Lord Curzon's communally divisive policy of partitioning the then unified and large province of Bengal. The reason that was cited for this extreme step was that it was an attempt to make feasible the administration of Bengal. But the real motive behind this, as the leaders of the freedom movement later realized, was to divide the population of Bengal along the lines of religion, thereby creating a populace that was polarized not between races but between religions such as Hindu and Muslims. There was a clear implementation of the divide and rule theory. The people too realized the unscrupulous plans of the British and thus the year 1905 witnessed the beginning of a fierce movement all across Bengal. It is believed that the movement united Bengalis across the state irrespective of their class, caste or religion. The movement saw bales of foreign cloth being burnt and the banishing of foreign salt sugar and other goods from the state. Students boycotted their classes and were seen looting and plundering shops which kept foreign goods, thereby providing an impetus to the movement. Swadeshi is an important facet of Mahatma Gandhi's approach to seeking freedom from the British Raj. It consisted of asking people to boycott foreign goods and to rely on indigenously manufactured products. The intention was to drive home the importance of a self-reliant populace and a self-sufficient country that deserved freedom from the British Empire. Tagore was distressed by the spectacle of people passionately burning foreign goods in public bonfires. He feared discontent among India's own social strata and the message of Gandhiji would give rise to aggressive nationalism which would only turn the country against itself. Another important aspect of the Swadeshi movement was the emphasis placed on self-reliance or Atma Shakti. Self-reliance meant assertion of national dignity, honor and self-confidence. Many textile mills, soap and match factories, handloom weaving concerns, national banks and insurance companies were opened. Acharya P. C. Ray organized his famous Bengal chemical Swadeshi stores. Even Tagore is believed to have helped set up a Swadeshi store. The Swadeshi movement had several consequences in the realm of culture. There was a flowering of nationalist poetry, prose and journalism. The patriotic songs written by the time by poets by Rabindranath Tagore, Rajini Kant Sen, Syed Abu Muhammad and Mukunda Das are sung in Bengal even to this day. The novel The Home and the World consists of 23 chapters, each of them a first person narrative by one of the three major characters. The first and the last chapters are both labelled Bimala's story, thus emphasizing the fact that the young wife Bimala is the pivotal character in what is superficially a love triangle but more profoundly a conflict between two points of view, one good and the other evil. The other two narrators are Nikhil, Bimila's husband, a wealthy landowner with enlightened views and a benevolent nature, 
and Sandeep, a charismatic but completely unscrupulous Swadeshi leader. The rich Bengali noble Nikhil, who is also known as Nikhilesh, lives happily with his wife Bimala until the appearance of his friend and radical revolutionary Sandeep, who is a passionate and active man but is a contradiction to the peace-loving and somewhat passive Nikhil. Sandeep easily attracts the innocent and unsuspecting Bimula, creating a love triangle. Although Nikhil figures out what is happening, he is a mature person and grants Bimula freedom to grow and choose what she wants in life as their marriage was arranged when she was a very young girl. Meanwhile, Bimula experiences the emotions of love for the first time in a manner which helps her to understand that it is indeed her husband Nikhil who really loves her. Sandeep is a fiery orator who can move thousands of people with his voice. He knows that nationalism has its other side also and in spite of it believes that freedom must be attained at any cost. Nikhil realizes that Sandeep has chosen a risky path and can go wrong with it. Bimula, who was married into the rich family in a traditional way, finds herself buffeted between her husband's rational, peace-loving and meticulous nature and Sandeep's dangerous but irresistible commitment. That is how the story begins, with the home and the outside world both in turmoil. Although for some time her husband has urged Bimala to move out into the world, it is not until that she meets the charismatic Sandeep that she decides to take advantage of the freedom that Nikhil has offered her. The first time Sandeep came to dinner, he urges her to remain with the men and take part in the discussion. Nikhil feels that he must invite Sandeep to be his guest while he is in the area. But a few days stretch into a few weeks and Nikhil finds that Sandeep is still present in the house. Although he admits to the reader that he believes strong men have a right to take whatever they want, he conceals his ruthlessness from Bimula. Instead, he flatters her calling her the mother of the Swadeshi movement and the Queen Bee. Though Nikhil's old master, who is visiting him, urges him to get rid of Sandeep, Nikhil knows that Bimula would not permit him to evict the agitator. However, when he learns that the Muslims are planning to attack his home in order to kill Sandeep, Nikhil informs his guest that he must leave the house now. Meanwhile, Bimula has given her jewels to Sandeep as well as a large sum of money which she stole from her husband with the aid of Sandeep's young follower Amulya, whom Bimula has taken under her wing as her own son. Just before fleeing from the Muslims, Sandeep does return the money and the jewels, insisting that for once in his life he has felt pangs of his conscience. However, Bimula has recovered from her infatuation with Sandeep and realizes that it is only Nikhil who really loves her. Before she can ask his forgiveness, however, her chivalrous husband gallops off to protect some women he hears are being mistreated by Muslim looters. Several hours later, Nikhil is brought back, critically injured. Amulya is dead. Despite the fact that Tagore does not rule out the possibility that Nikhil will live and become reconciled with his repentant wife, the home and the world is often described as Tagore's darkest novel. At the threshold of the 20th century in Bengal, Reeling under British rule and sectarian divisions, Tagore envisioned a place of learning unfettered by religion or regional barriers. Bimala stands at the centre of the tale. She represents Bengal at a crossroad. 
through her dilemma, Tagore allegorizes the conflicts of the nation. Bengal is given the shape of a woman's body. Bimala is represented through the metaphor of Bengal's geography. The two become one. What they have in common is also the fact that they do not recognize themselves any longer because they seem to have betrayed their own values. What has produced this change in them is the fact of being glorified and turned into something supernatural that will call for inhuman acts in its defense. Feeling deserted by one and enthralled by the other, Bimala pictures herself as Bengal, torn between two worlds. She has been drawn forth from her home corner by the sudden call of some unknown. Convinced of her own power and glory, she bedecks herself to persuade her husband to join Swadeshi movements. But when he refuses to do so, like Bengal, she answers Sandeep's call. Tagore presents Sandeep in a very negative light. Although he worships Bimala, he does not want to give her the possibility of choice. He treats her like a goddess whose ultimate aim is to guide him in his enterprises. There is an innate selfishness at the core of his decisions since he wants her agency to serve his own purposes and benefits. As the scene of the robbery attests, she betrays her own principles going against all that was good in her so that Sandeep can benefit. Sandeep thus leads Bimala and through her Bengal to destruction when he urges her to steal for a cause that Tagore sees not as the cause of the nation but as his own personal cause. Tagore ends condemning the movement through the character's predictable fates that come to reaffirm the allegorical quality of the narrative. Nikhil's fatal wound, Sandeep's cowardly departure to the north after the conflict he has provoked, Bimala's future life of loneliness, desolation and guilt. Bimala and Bengal are thus left without either the home or the world. With this, we come to the end of our discussion of part 1 of the novel The Home and the World. In the next part, we will discuss more themes from this novel. See you until then. Thank you.